But then he comes to this one little verse. It's the deepest of all. He said, and I again saw under the sun, verse 11, chapter 9, that the race is not to the swift. Solomon, have you lost it? I've seen a lot of races, and races are won usually by the fastest person, right? To say the race is not to the swift, that doesn't make any sense. Well, once in a while, but usually the fastest runner wins. What are you saying, Solomon? And then look at the next thing he says. He says, the battle is not to the warriors. I've not experienced that. You want to have a little cage fight? You jump in there, one of those cage fighters. If you're not a warrior, I can tell you, you're going to lose. The battle is to those who are prepared, those who are fit, those who are warriors. That's it. He says, the battle is not won by warriors. Solomon, have you lost it? What in the world are you saying? This is a mystery. He says, neither is bread to the wise. Now, that really, have you ever known anybody who was wise? who was hungry for bread? I've never known of that. Solomon, Solomon, this is deep. This is crazy. And then he says, nor wealth to the discerning. Now that is crazy. If you have discernment, I mean, you had discernment, you're, you're going to have means. You're, gonna have, you're not going to be hungry. You're going to have means. He said, wealth doesn't go to the discerning person. That, that is absolutely wild, ridiculous. I debate with him, him, him on that all day long. What are you talking about? And then he compounds it. He says, the discerning and, and favor to men of ability. Men who have ability and talent, men and women who are gifted, they, they have the favor of God, the favor of mankind. I mean, Solomon, this is all backwards. It's, it's a riddle wrapped up in a mystery that's put inside an enigma, this particular verse. It's the deepest, most confusing thing of all until you read the last of it. Look what he says. For time and chance overtake them all. What did he say? He's saying the fast, lose the race, the wealthy are hungry, the discerning don't make it. He goes down all these things that are contrary to anything we know, any kind of rational thinking. He said the decisive thing is time and chance. Right place, right time, bang. I drove home last night from church and on the way home I had my radio tuned and somebody who was talking about the stock market, which I know zip about, this guy said, you can make a lot of money on the stock market if your timing is right. Well, you should write that down. How smart is that? This guy is a wonderful stock analysis. Hello? Time and chance consume everything else, does it not? You can be the fastest and lose if the timing and the chance is there. You can be wise and not make it. You can have discerning and you can fail. All the, it's time and chance, time and chance. What's Solomon saying? Somebody would say he's playing craps. <laughs> Come on, go ahead. It's just all luck, time and chance. But he says, this overtakes them all. And then I looked at this verse and I said, who is in control of chance? Who runs time? Said, oh, I wonder if Solomon, somewhere in his secular, humanistic, godless understanding of life, did he have a little light peep in once again from him who is above the sun, even God, has he given us any insight? And I saw two little slivers of light right in this section that just clear this up so beautifully for us all. Look at verse 12 of chapter 8. Solomon says, I know that it will be well for those who fear God and fear him 
openly. He says, time and chance will work out for you if you fear God, worship God, and you worship God openly. That's what he's saying. Go to church. <laughs> That's what he's saying. Worship privately, worship corporately. What you do is go to church. In the light of all the mysteries of life, the confusions of life, the question of life, he says, go to church. 